new short tutorial to discover how to get started with FreeCAD. This is clearly a tutorial intended for beginners. We will use the very basic workbenches, the part design workbench and the part workbench, and see the distinction between the two. In this tutorial, we will simply try to make small decorations from an image, like the one I created here. This 3D object was modeled from this small drawing. Let's see how we can do this. To achieve this result, we'll simply start with a sketch based on the chosen drawing. We'll then extrude the shape to create a volume of material. Next, we'll remove material using the same principle with a sketch that defines the removals. Following the same principle, we'll make the small roofs. This is our basic house. Then, we'll discover another way of modeling with the part workbench, which is more like building blocks. I'll show you the small elements that we can move, put together, and merge. These are the two main ways of modeling. Let's see now how to do this. I remind you that we're using FreeCAD. Here, you can always check the version. FreeCAD version 1.0 RC2. To start, we create a new file that we'll carefully save. Now which workbench should we use to create our object? There are two main workbenches in FreeCAD the part workbench and the part design workbench. Part design is more like a drawing board and part is more like building blocks. We'll start with the drawing board. When you want to start making something in FreeCAD with the part design workbench, the first step is to create a body. Here you have body, which will be the body of our house. We'll rename it home. For every body, you have a coordinate system that helps you navigate in the 3 d world. So X, Y, Z with the basic planes. This is always the starting element when creating a 3D object in FreeCAD. We want to base our work on a sketch, so we'll import an image. In FreeCAD, you can display a small JPEG or PNG image. You can go on the internet, choose what you like, or draw by hand and build over it. A very interesting property of this tool is that you can define the object's dimension. We imported the image as is, and we can give it a length. If we want to make a small Halloween decoration about 60 millimeters high, we'll use the calibration tool. Take point number one, point number two, and indicate that it should be 60 millimeters, and it scales your image. We have our base image in the XY plane, so we can select the XY plane and create a sketch. We'll outline the exterior of the house with the polyline tool which will give us the exterior shape of the house. We do this by hand without complicating things going to each intersection. We're tracing the outer contour for now. At the last point, it's important to return to the first point. We click on it and there it's closed. We have our sketch. If we hide the house, the base drawing, we can see our sketch here. To now give volume to our drawing, we'll close the sketch and extrude it using the pad tool, extrusion. By default, it makes a 10 mm extrusion, but we only want 5 mm. If we hide the coordinate system, we now have our house outlined. Now we'd like to create our windows. We select the XY plane again and create a new sketch on this plane. The problem is that the volume we created before hides our drawing. To change this, we'll modify the display mode to wireframe. Now we can see that our 3D is transparent we only see the edges. Now we'll draw the windows with small rectangles for the panes. Since this is an artistic project, we're not making it complicated, we're really doing it on the fly. For the door we used polyline to make the outline and we'll add a small circular arc art guide. We need to make sure everything is well connected. For the angled window, we have a very interesting tool that allows us to copy sketch elements. We make a copy, then use the rotation tool to orient our window as desired. We can then use the translation tool to position it. Once the sketch is closed, we'll do the inverse operation. Instead of adding material, we'll remove it with the pocket tool. If we get a wire not closed error, it means that an element of the sketch isn't closed. To ensure it's properly connected, we select the two points and press C to connect them. If we have difficulties, there's a sketch validation tool. We select our sketch, then validate it with Validate Sketch. In FreeCAD, all operations have a direction. 
If you remove material in this direction, below the plane, nothing happens. We need to do it in reverse to perforate our first volume. For the roofs, we proceed in the same way. We create a new sketch and want the eaves to follow the first exterior shape well. We'll base it on external geometry in our sketch, which allows us to reuse the edges already created on the solid. We switch back to wireframe display to see clearly what's happening. For the chimney, we'll use the part workbench. We can take a small cone as a base, which appears in the center of the screen. This is another way of seeing 3D modeling, which I call building blocks. We can take our basic solid and manipulate it in space. We can directly edit its different parameters. 5 mm height, 3 mm for the second radius, 1 mm for the fur. For the top of the chimney, we add a small cylinder with an outer diameter of 3 and an inner diameter of 1. The transform tool allows us to move elements. If the shapes don't update after modifying values, there's a tool to refresh the object's state. Movements are made in increments defined in the menu, for example in steps of 1, 2 or 5 mm. For 3 printing, if we want to print the house as one piece and the chimney as another, we can merge the cone and cylinder to make our chimney. To insert it into the house, we do a boolean operation. We create a hole in the house in the shape of the chimney. We select the house, press the tier and click on the chimney, then use the boolean cut tool. There you have it. This was a small tutorial to show you how to make decorative pieces in FreeCAD. It's not just for serious engineering, you can also make small things for fun. We saw the part design workbench, the coordinate system, bodies, how to import an image and scale it, how to make a sketch, how to extrude and remove material. We also discovered the second way of 3D modeling with the part workbench, where we're more in building blocks mode with objects that we move, weld and remove from each other with Boolean operations. I hope you enjoyed this little tutorial and learned something. Don't hesitate to share your comments and questions, both on the content and the format. I'm curious to receive your feedback. Thank you.